Hello everybody, Prow here and welcome to another episode on the Bedrock Guide. And this is going to be a continuation of the last episode. We got one unit down. We got one, two, three more to go. One minor thing that you guys should fix that I did not do in the last episode was putting a redstone block right here on oh because it locked it okay put in a redstone block right here because it'll just keep it so as this is moving around um, items don't drop down into the next hopper down which really shouldn't be a problem with the system anyways but just in case it is put those right there um, you don't need them on this side because we actually just want them dropping down and going across to the next side anyways but on this left side, if you're looking at the back, go ahead and throw those in. And this episode is actually going to be about doing a few different things. So I need to get this built one, two, three more times. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I might do that first. And then we have some hard things, not hard things, but we have a few different things that we need to do that I want to show. So we're going to show connecting all of these systems together. Uh, also, I need to do a little bit more of a like unique input here because I did not you see how much space this takes on the left hand side i did not want to take up that much space on this left hand side just to make the spacing all work out good and to make the aesthetics look good so i shortened this side up and what we're going to have to do is build this thing a little bit further back into the wall um, also we need to get an item input system in and i think it's going to go somewhere here in the center i haven't thought of or figured out exactly what it's going to be or look like yet so we'll, we'll kind of like figure that out i guess more towards the end of this but it's time for me to do a little bit of magic and let's go ahead and let's get three more of these guys up. So the next challenge is, well, maybe it's the first challenge for this episode, but the challenge that we have here, we have all of them up. We have them all functioning. They do all work. They do all rotate is we need to get the item elevators in. So actually, I think all of them, that one, that one, and this one will all go in the traditional spot, which is just right there, which is fine. Um, but this one right here is going to be different. I need to figure out how I'm going to like shove this item elevator in the back. Maybe I like kind of fit it in like center ish right here and have the items come in from this way. And then we also do need to think about too the fact that we, we are going to have items come out here, go down. And then they need to go over and get over there somehow in a way hmm in a way that's not gonna like suck items out of these hoppers or out of these chests which means we're probably gonna have to drop down maybe a couple of times or maybe we like come this direction and then come over like this maybe i don't know it almost seems like maybe i should do that first if i do that that'll actually work right so um here let's let's visualize this slightly so we're pulling items out of that last one to take them over to the next unit, right? So what we would do is we would have it go this way. It would come into here. It would go straight across like this. And it needs to get over. Oh, it just needs to get right here, right? What we could do is we could just have it go like this. Now, depending on how you want to do it, you, you could maybe do this with like water streams too. Um, but it's not it's not really a ton uh, to some people this may be a lot of hoppers but i mean i have an iron farm and it makes it a little bit simpler for me it's one less thing that is like triggering off via redstone too so i think i like this method a little bit better just for my needs um, but feel free to do it how you want to but this seems like the easiest way to accomplish this to me it's just it's a straight shot over and a straight shot in and there's no extra going up and down and that sort of thing it does keep it rather easy so i do like that and we could probably also to keep an input chest over here so let's say like this is going to be i don't know my wood and stone section and if i have if i have just a lot of wood and stone instead of popping it in you know in the main input which will be center ish or input over here whatever I can maybe just pop it into the wood and stone input right here and then it can just get put in right there instead sounds like a good plan to me it could shorten things up a little bit in terms of like how much stuff is running and how long it runs etc so i think that's going to work i'm going to go ahead and get these elevators in and then i'll kind of show you guys any if i run across any issues or anything special that's different that i have to do but i think for the most part this thing is pretty straightforward I just started stream and I was about to start working on the item elevators and we have an intruder attack. 
No intruders allowed here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Get out of here. Okay, and after about an hour and a half later with the stream, we've been hanging out, we've been chilling. Uh, we got all of our item elevators in. So to start out with, this is like the first side, right? Where um, everything's gonna kind of start out and go. And those items are gonna come in from right here. Uh, we haven't built the actual input system yet, but we do have the spot for it. It's just dead center in the room. And those items will kind of come through, they'll flow through, and they'll go this way until they reach the item elevator, which I told you guys we were gonna kind of shove in the back here because I did not want it over here. It would have basically ruined any semblance of a hallway right here. So we were able to keep what looks like a hallway by having it shoved back here. It's the exact same thing. I just moved it and I just like routed everything to it differently, but it, it's all exactly the same as the other ones. And it just goes to show you that just be creative in how you do things. You can have your input or different things like done in different ways. Um, I probably could have even scooted this one closer over maybe, and it would have been fine, which which would have been kind of neat to do, but I didn't, I didn't need to. I had a space back here. So I gave myself a little bit extra room. Once all of our items get through the system here, they will kind of go down and they'll go into that hopper right there. And that hopper leads through this chain and links in to the first system that we built over here that runs through the whole system. And if it, the item doesn't find its place there, it'll do the same thing. I'll come over here and it'll it'll go through there and it'll come into this one and then lastly same thing happens a hopper line leads from over there to this elevator right here and this right here is the end of the line guys so everything will go through all of these chests i haven't even counted how many chests it is 10 20 30 40 40 times 4 160 chests we have 160 double chests here and something you can do i don't think i'll ever need this but in case i feel like i do or maybe i want to use these for like sorted stuff and then i'll have like unsorted stuff move down uh, we have this right here and all the items that we would normally take to another system um, or in this case would have just been looping back around if i somehow overflowed all these chests and got them all full i just have a little like hopper going down here and it's leading to i think there's like five or six double chests going down and i don't think i'm ever going to need to access that that will only have items go into it if everything else here is completely full. So, but in case like I come in, I'm like, oh man, my all my chests are filled up. Instead of it maybe breaking the system and getting the hoppers clogged up, instead I'll just be able to pop down there and like get the extra stuff out, which is perfect. So um, that's, that's the system here in a nutshell. Now we have to figure out our item inputs because we're going to be bringing, we're going to be building a system right here that is going to uh, conveniently take all of our items and put it in there and I don't know that I'll go super feature rich here but there's a couple of things I'd like to be able to do okay so we're starting to get together the system here and up until now we had been swift flicking levers right here on the fronts of these things to turn each module individually on and off and if you want to do that that's fine but that's a little annoying right we want one master on off switch now, I'm not 100% sure if this is the exact location of it, but it can very easily be moved as we go through and design the center area to do whatever it is we want to do. So I threw it here for now. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a switch right here. And that switch or lever is going to fork out and then send signal both ways. We'll probably put like a repeater here, a repeater here, and then we'll send the signal out in both directions and then we will be able to power all of these guys on and off from one spot. Um, all we gotta do is we gotta make sure we want it to stay in this state right here. I guess really it doesn't matter in the end. I don't know, it probably does matter. We want it to be, cause then we can have an indicator light too, although there'll be a good enough indication with the chunk, ch chunk, ch chunk of the, of the pistons, but maybe an indicator light here would be good too in case like, I don't know, I don't have my headphones on, I have the game muted, something like that. So right now, this is the off position. So when it's in this position right here, we would want it so this is also off, right? So we gotta figure out how should we be placing our torches to do this. So do we do one right here? Yeah, one right there. And then this right here, and then this right here. I think that's it, yeah. And then we can run redstone dust. Oh gosh, oh. That's not gonna work. Um, hmm, because what's happening is that's powering this block. Oh, I just don't need to put the dust there. So no, we're still good. We're fine. We're fine. So now what should happen is if I flick this, it should do absolutely nothing until I do this. Okay, now let's reset it. Cause remember sometimes I said like, if you, 
if you mess up the orientation of these things or unload the area that's why you have these like switches the levers on the side to be able to get to it or access it it should work now yeah we're good so that's on that's off and now what we can do is we can just do the same thing on all four sides all right it's all redstoned up we got redstone going this way we got redstone going this way i put it all on the green wool because i can i have these things now and when i flip the lever we should see that's on that's on that's on and this is on so all the sides are working okay and i have one more kind of problem i needed to solve so sometimes with this system whenever i would throw the lever let it run and then turn it off there is a very slight chance that it's possible that this um i don't it only happens with this one that i've seen but this bottom piston or this bottom i guess uh cycle of hoppers can get stuck because when it stops it it stops it at just the wrong moment so what i did was built in a little bit of a, like a fail safe here i guess so now we have an extra signal running into here from this so basically what's happening is whenever we turn this system off it'll turn this redstone signal off it'll delay it by eight ticks and then cut it off and then that will pulse these observers here we have one observer looking at the redstone these other two observers are looking down at this observer right here so basically it sends a signal up and it sends one final pulse to that piston so that way if a hopper gets stuck right there how do i get out of here so that way when i'm running it if a hopper gets stuck right there which it didn't but if it were to it would get pushed that piston would get pushed one final time and then that will like unlodge that hopper basically it's going to help it so it doesn't happen so often when you have to come back here and like manually flick a lever to get the piston to line up because maybe you like unload the area or like you get hit with a funky lag bug because you're on a server or realm and it's lagging so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put a few of those in on the rest of these and then i think we're ready to start like figuring out the decoration to the room Okay, I've patched up everything, all the redstone parts done. And actually, before we get to the decor of the room, I need to figure out the center area where we're gonna be loading items. And it's likely I'll, I, there won't be many times I have to like really stack this thing with a lot of items, but sometimes there will be. Sometimes I'll go off on a project binge and I'll come back with just like chests full or shulker boxes full of stuff. So I think what we might need, I don't know that I wanna make it like super tall with a lot of different um, like, uh, like a just a like over overdone amount of chests okay so i have this cool little like pattern going on here and i wanted to have a good way to like get everything loaded into the chests so i'm thinking what we do so that way it looks good and we don't overdo it at the same time is maybe we do something like this right where we have like a set of chests here a set of chests here so i still got to work off like work up the one off switch i don't know how that's going to work quite yet but what if we have two sides here where we got hoppers hoppers so i can do shulker box shulker box shulker box so three six as many as nine twelve shulker boxes at a time or as many as six double chests at a time which would also be 12 shulker boxes at a time worth of double chests so it's gonna be a good amount of storage going in and then I just need to figure out if I'm going to do that. I need to figure out where I'm going to put the one off switch. I don't know where that's going to go yet. Right now, it just currently runs right here. And then, and then we need to figure out how we're going to like dress all of this up. So I don't know which one to figure out first. I'm going to tinker a little bit. Okay, a little bit of work later, and I have two separate on off switches set up and a little indicator above them. Again, I don't quite know what I'm doing for decoration yet. We'll figure it out in a little bit, but I can flip the lever. That turns on, so I know that this one is the one that is turned on. Everything runs. I can flick it to turn it off, and they are all turned off. And then same thing over here. I can flick it to turn it on, and they all cut on. And I can flick it to turn it off, and they all turn off. We have our six double chests we can load items into manually, or we have our uh, 12 hoppers, uh, six on each side that we can put hoppers in or put shulkers into, and those will get unloaded. So we have the whole input system all done. We put all of our stuff in, we flip the levers, and we wait, basically. Now what I wanna do is I would like to get a good looking like aesthetic to this room. So 
I think it's time to start putting that together. I need to figure out which kind of blocks I'm going to use though, because I am not quite sure on what that's going to be yet. Okay, this next portion here, we're going to do in a series of jump cuts. Uh, first, I've prepped my floor. I've got torches down on the floor. Remember, this is Bedrock Edition, and in Bedrock Edition, these torches, the light from the torches, will go through slabs. So we're going to end up putting top half slabs on the floor here, and that will allow us to get light through. So we can have non-visible lighting here where we don't have to like see torch spam or anything like that. And that'll allow us to decorate with lighting in other places, which I have some... Um, some ideas for the ceiling. I've done the same thing under the chests here. That way we have plenty of light back behind the chests. And I have placed in some pillars, uh, points of interest where I've already planned a lot of this out in creative mode, where I know I'm gonna have different transitions in the floor. So I'm gonna start out by throwing the floor in. And then from there, we're gonna move to this little center section. Um, I'll cut you guys in before we do that. Okay, step one's all complete. We got the floor in. I went with this like linked square like design i don't know it was really just something i came up with i didn't want to go with a standard checkerboard pattern or something that was just like all flat of one color or texture so we did some uh, polished andesite with some regular andesite uh, in these little like links and i think it turned out really good uh, again we have all the lighting down below uh, we have lighting below these chests here we put in some dark oak uh, strip dark oak logs here and then some dark oak logs under the chest just to kind of i guess add some contrast to the room which i think looks good and now i think what i want to do is build up this middle section i'm actually about to start my live stream right now so make sure make sure you catch those by the way twitch 1 p.m eastern standard time monday tuesday thursday and friday is when you can catch me and yeah i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna get this middle section done and then we'll probably do a, a short video update then we'll do the outer walls and then we'll do the ceiling and then we'll throw in some like a little detailing and things like that and this room will be all finished and it's gonna look spectacular three hours later I'm just kidding, it hasn't been three hours, but it's been about an hour now. And we have this whole center area built out and I am absolutely in love with the way it looks. It's really cool looking. Um, we'll add in maybe some other details at some point. I'm not quite sure what yet. Um, and we still need to get a ceiling in here, um, which will provide us lighting. So we'll be hanging some lighting down, but we have something that looks cool. We got birch, uh, birch logs behind there that are stripped. And that looks really cool. Also, we threw in some a uh, little bit of redstone right here. I stand on this pressure plate. It locks that hopper right there, which is important because if I fill this up with shulker boxes, I'll be, you know, I'll let this thing run. And then when I want to collect my shulker boxes, I'll come up here with my pickaxe and I'll break, 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 break. And then I can pull the shulker boxes out of here without them going into the system. So that's why that is the way it is. And um, here with stream right now, again, Streamland, say hello to YouTube land, YouTube land, say hello to Streamland. And I had a lot of people, they were saying hi to themselves, which figure that out in the whole space time continuum. Um, we have one of our modules, like actually like encased and decorated now. I feel like I need to find a way to light it. I think I've, I think I know how I want to do that, um, but it needs to be lit a little bit better. It's a little dark, especially as you get up to the top I and mean, we'll have hanging lights. So that'll help, but I might want to like backlight it too. But anyways, I got one of these. I need to do three more of them and then we need to kind of like decorate in the corners too. So I'm going to start working on those things and then I'll see you guys on the other side of that. Okay, a little bit of work later and we've got a lot more done. So all of these guys are done, except I do need to put some item frames in and we're going to probably do that in the next video. It's not going to happen in this one. And I have corners put in and then we're going to put probably a barrel right here to load items in and it'll automatically go into the system to the right. And I have a spot to put a shulker box here. Now, the reason I have that instead of only doing it over here is based on how I organize this, like this area may very well just be, let's say the stone and wood area. So if I have a shulker box that's just full of stone and wood stuff, instead of running it over here and running it through the entire system, I could just put it up here and then let it run in and just put in, put itself in over on this side. You know, it'll just shortcut things. Same thing back here. Maybe this is like all my colored stuff. So colored terracotta and concrete and wool and all that. So if that's the case, then instead of putting into the system here and having it start down there and run its way all the way through, I can, I can just simply just throw it in right here and it'll just sort into this area right here first. And it'll just make the whole system, the whole thing work a lot quicker. So that's the whole goal behind that. This goes to this one. This goes to this one, that goes to that one. And this one doesn't need one because that's the first one in the line. So I can just throw it in here if it's the first one in the line. Next, I need to do the ceiling. So I'm gonna do another cutaway. I have a plan for the ceiling. 
it's going to look really cool. Let's go ahead and implement that and I'll catch you guys on the other side of this clip. Okay, I am all done with stream and I am all done with the room. Take a look. It has turned out spectacular. I am absolutely loving it. Uh, we got some lanterns hanging. Of course, we still got to hang the signs. So that'll happen in another episode. Uh, we have a barrel that we could put items in manually to put in, like I mentioned earlier. And we have disguised the hopper here. That way, we could put a shulker box up here to load into this direction as well. We got some little utility bits here and there. We hid some crafting tables. We got ender chests and anvils and stone cutters. So we have utility around. I'm thinking maybe in the next episode this is going to be like maybe some type of like hallway slash stairway that goes up to what will be the actual main storage building that way we have a way up and down there and overall this place is great it is functional you hear it yes it is going and there's there's some items that are that have been like falling into the system so i have to go through and empty out all these chests now um we have that little bit right there that works, which is awesome. And yeah, this place is all like ready to go. It's ready to roll. And I think that's where we're going to end up the episode. So I thank you all so much for hanging out. I appreciate it very much. If you could, please hit the like button on the video and drop a subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed right now, my analytics show me that roughly 60% of you are not subscribed to the channel. So if we could bump that down by 10 or 20% and get a whole bunch of subscriptions, that'd be awesome. It helped me out a lot. I appreciate it. Also, click the bell. That way you get notified when videos come out. And make sure you follow me on Discord and Twitter where you also get notified the videos come out and when I go live on live streams. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a good one. Bye.